Hey, what's up creators today? We're gonna to be showing you how we can use sounds inside of Unreal Engine 5. By the end of this video, you'll be able to take raw sound files, import them into Unreal Engine, create a sound cue and place it in 3D space within your scenes to bring your environments to life. And you're gonna be able to use this absolutely anywhere. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Unreal Engine 5 and show you exactly how this can be set up. Just before we dive in, I recommend that you have an environment to work with. This can be anything. For me, I'm currently using the medieval game environment from the Unreal Engine Marketplace, which is completely free to download. I've also included a free sound file that we can use for this tutorial in the link in the description down below. Hopping into Unreal Engine, what I have here is a very simple scene straight off the marketplace like I said. Now, what we're gonna be setting up is I have a little fire, a little furnace here with fire inside of it. And what's gonna happen by the end of this video is when you get close to this fire, you're gonna be able to hear it very loudly. But as you move away, as you back away slowly, it's gonna to start to get quieter and quieter and quieter until you can't hear it. That being said, you're gonna understand just how you can add these sounds into your scene and how you can apply them absolutely anywhere, regardless of the sound. So the very first step that I have for you is we actually need to bring a sound into Unreal Engine and this really could not be easier. To do this, what we're gonna do is we're going to find a file. Now I've included one here and note this is in the WAV file format. I'd recommend you use this when importing any sounds into Unreal Engine. And we're gonna bring this into Unreal Engine. To do this, we're gonna to go to our content folder. If you haven't got one already, right click and make a new folder for your sound effects. And then with this, what we're gonna do is simply drag and drop this file loop WAV file into Unreal Engine. And just like that, it's imported and it's ready to use. So with this sound file, what we can do now is we can go ahead and press play on this to listen to it. And with that, you're now going to be able to hear it. And then we can stop that by just pressing the stop button there. Now, what some of you might be thinking is, Luke, I can actually just drag and drop this into the scene. And with this, we're then gonna be able to hear it. And you'd be correct, but we have pretty much no control over this. We want to use a sound cue. And we're gonna show you just how you can do that. So go ahead and delete this from the scene and let's do this properly. So just before we create a sound cue, I want to very quickly introduce you to exactly what a sound cue is. A sound cue is essentially a type of sound blueprint where we can add different nodes and different things to control how the sound cue is going to behave. Whether that's modulating the volume or the pitch, setting it to loop or playing random sounds or just doing all kinds of things. The way we control this is using blueprints and that is all in a sound cue. Let's go ahead and set one up. To set up a sound cue, really straightforward, right click on this and press create cue. And then you're gonna see, it's going to automatically create us a queue here. Double click on this to open it up. Inside of here, we have two things. We have the final output on the right hand side here. And then we actually have the wave play, which is going to play the raw audio, the sound wave. Between this wave player and the final output, we can put different things along the way, such as using modulators to have a minimum and a maximum pitch and randomizes these. We could also tell the final output to play a random sound wave if we wanted to. And we could have multiple of these. So if it's a footstep, for example, it'd have footstep one, footstep two, footstep three, and it just chooses one at random. If you want to learn a little bit more about sound cues, let me know in the comments down below. For now though, what we're gonna do is simply just have the sound wave going directly into the output. Sound cues is something that I could sit here and talk to you about for hours and hours. For now though, we're gonna get the customization we need by simply dragging this sound cue into our scene. So if I go ahead and drag and drop this in, what I can now do is I can adjust my volume multiplier and my pitch multiplier if I wanted to. So if I wanted this to be louder than it was before, what I might wanna do is go to my volume multiplier here, 
and set this to be twice as loud by setting this to 2. I could also adjust the pitch, but again I'm not really going to dabble with this too much just because I'm quite happy with the pitch that we've got. The next control I'm going to introduce you to is where we're going to be overriding the attenuation, which is how far the sound can actually travel, and this is all in 3D space. And this is one of the things I'm super, super excited to show you. Let's show you what I mean. Okay, just before I go on to the whole 3D space thing and 3D sounds thing, what I want to do is just quickly show you the issue with the sounds that we've got here right now. And that is, even though you're really far away from that sound, that fire, we can hear it very, very loudly. Let's press simulate and you can hear this for yourselves. Okay, so I'm in the environment here and you can see, even when I'm really close, the fire is very loud. But at the same time, even when I'm far away, I can still hear that fire really loudly. And I have to go very, very, very far before I can stop hearing it. In this case, I can actually hear it even when I'm, I'm, a, I'm about sort of 500 meters away, which is quite a lot. And that's where the whole 3D audio is going to come in. This is where we need to use our spatialization. So let's go ahead and show you how we can set this up. So the very first thing that we want to do is with our sound that we created, what we want to do is make sure that we place this accurately in our scene. So I'm going to move this right into the source of the sound. So I'm going to move this right into the fire here. And you can see this, this is placed quite well. Now in terms of being able to control how far that sound can actually travel, that's where in the details panel, we need to scroll down and we need to override the attenuation. And something's going to happen when we do this. The first of which is it's going to give us the power and the control to be able to say this is how far this sound can travel. And secondly, we're going to be able to see two spheres. One is the inner radius, which is where the sound is going to be at its loudest, which in this case is pretty much this whole hut right now. And we can see that, the little orange sphere there. And then we see a second sphere, which is the fall off distance, which is how far the, the sound can travel. And we can see here that fire sound can pretty much be heard in the entire village. And, and that's not accurate. That's where we now need to show you how we can adjust all of this to be a bit more realistic. So realistically, I want the, the fire to be at its loudest when you're right next to it. To do this, I take my, in, to do this, I take my inner radius here and I make this lower so it covers pretty much the area in the immediate vicinity of the fire. This works. I've set this to about 132. You can slide this and you can adjust it to make whatever you're doing work. So we've got that now. Now the next thing is we only want to be able to hear this fire when we're in the hut, not when we're outside. And that's where we then need to adjust the fall off radius. So we click that value for fall off distance and simply just reduce it. Now the value that I'm going to go for here actually is going to be around 300. So what we have now is the inner radius, the inner sphere here. This is where the sound's going to be at its loudest. And then it's going to start getting quieter and quieter and quieter until it reaches this outer sphere here. And now if we go ahead and press simulate, we can test this out for ourselves. Okay, so now that we're in the simulate mode, we can actually test this. So I'm currently outside the hut. I can't hear the fire, which is great. But then as I go into the hut, you can see I can start to hear the fire. And if I get closer, it's going to get louder and louder, which is perfect. And that's just where I'm using the attenuation. So just like we set up, we've got the area on the inside where this is going to be at its loudest. And then we've got the fall off distance on the inside. A couple of things I, I also did is I increased the volume multiplier to five so it's louder. And then in the sound cue, something that you should also do as well is just make sure that if it's a looping sound like a fire that just happens indefinitely, click on the wave player and just set looping to true. Once we've got that set up, we are good to go with our sound. And we can apply this technique to any sound anywhere in our environment. We can really bring these to life. That being said, I'm super excited to hear what you're able to create with sounds, what it is you're doing. Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. 
Also, don't forget, if you'd like to hear a little bit more about sound cues and how they work, let me know and then I can make a dedicated video for that. Lastly, if you'd like to meet more aspiring developers just like yourselves, be sure to check out our community Discord server, where we have over 6,000 motivated developers just like you. That's it for this video though, I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, stay awesome, keep curating, Virtus signing out.